So, hello everybody. I can send me over the P1M and the P1 Nano controllers and I did a review of the largest model, the V1M, some time ago. And now I have also the other two models for testing and they have a similar feature sets besides they are smaller. So let's check them out. But first let's have a look what's coming in the box. You get a free version of Bitwig 8 track and they sent me for both controllers the additional display and already now I can tell you if you plan to get one of these devices to absolutely order the displays as well with them because without you are navigating pretty blind. So looking at build quality, both models are fully plastic, but nevertheless feel quite solid. And also the faders and the knobs feel pretty nicely. The knobs are no longer rusted in contrast to the older Icon models, which I think feels much nicer to have a smooth turning of the knobs. And connecting the displays is pretty easy. You can simply flip it in the two holes and then you need one USB cable to connect it to the main device which also gets nicely hidden behind the device and also the display is tiltable so you can adjust that to your liking on your desktop which is also a good benefit. Both devices run via USB 3, which is a bit of a drawback, I think, because you need to have a USB 3 connector on your computer, which is not that big of an issue. But I think the problem a little bit with USB 3 is that you cannot have long cables with them. So you are limited to a near distance to the computer. And already on my desk, it was quite a challenge to find a space where I could put the device which is close to my computer so plan for that as well and the bigger model needs additional power so the USB connection is not sufficient for that model I guess because of all the large displays that need to be powered and so for that you get a power block. Also the larger model is fully plastic but nevertheless also feels quite solid and I think the old models they were metal and much heavier because of that but the new ones don't feel any less sturdy than the previous devices. Also, the motors in the faders are not that noisy. You for sure can hear them, but it's not on an annoying level. So one of the big features of the device is that you can switch between three doors. Uh, this works like this, that you can have three different MIDI ports and these can be configured for each door. And luckily, since I have an RME UFX3 audio interface, I can really run two doors at once. So I have running Reaper and I have running Bitwig as well. And I could even play them both which does not make that much sense um, but nevertheless you could do that so I'm running here Bitwig and I'm switching to Reaper and we need to switch here the control to Reaper you see all the tracks changed and I could control that as well so let's first have a look at the configuration I run on both systems, so both in Reaper and Bitwig, I run my Driven by MOS implementation, but meanwhile for Bitwig, there is also a native implementation from Bitwig itself available. There are some differences. I still prefer mine due to how it looks on the display, but I guess that's totally up to taste. You get some integration features, which I could not build via MCU, but you could pretty do similar things. So if you got one of the devices, check out both implementations and choose the one you like more. But on both platforms, I added a configuration template. So it uses the generic Mackie protocol, which is used by many devices. And here I have presets for different devices. And here I added the P1M and the P1 Nano. Just remember that it does not stick to that. It's just a preset which configures all these different settings down here. And making the correct settings gives you additional features here on the device 
device, for example, the view meters are working then and also the display colors are working, which are not part of the standard original Mackie protocol. In Reaper, with the latest Driven by Moss release, you need to think about that now the MIDI inputs and outputs of Reaper itself are used, so you need to activate them, which is on my computer pretty big chaos. <laughs> since I'm regularly uh, switching here uh, controllers. But nevertheless, you see here that we have different inputs for the Icon P1M. So there is the Icon P1M up here, which is the main connection. And via this connection, I run Bitwig. And on this second channel, I run Reaper. This is why this one here is enabled. Same for the output. Also here, we enable the second part, which is that one. And don't forget to switch on this setting to not send reset messages, otherwise your faders will hop funnily around if you start or stop playback in Reaper. And then finally, in a Driven by Moss configuration, you can select these two ports to make it work. If you just enable them in Reaper, just simply click on Rescan Media Devices and they will show up in the list and then you can select it and then close it down and it will start running. So what can you actually do with the device? For sure you have the faders. So watch all my old Mackie control <laughs> protocol videos. You can do basically everything with these devices. What I already said is that the control here is pretty nice. You see it's pretty slow when I turn them, but you can tweak that. That's a good thing about Driven by Most. You can tweak a lot of settings. And here you have a speed setting. Where is it for the normal control? Maybe I will normally go to plus 50. And you can also configure the slow settings if you combine it with shift. It's a bit of a drawback that shift is only available here via the touch device and not as a dedicated button, but nevertheless, it's also working. And if you change that setting, it's now faster, but there's also another setting where you can tweak the speed of the encoder knob. And this is also pretty helpful because it's sometimes quite different than the other knobs. Also, all view meters are working as you already saw when I ran it. And what is also interesting, since it has only eight faders, so there's no master fader, you can nevertheless switch here to master and then the H1 is the master fader. So let's go back a little bit. So you can turn it down and up. And if you leave it like that and go back to the eighth, it will jump back into the eighth position or you are back to the master. And you have for sure, you have record enabled, solo and mute, and you can select the track. So nothing unexpected here. Where the fun begins is up here in this display. And I showed that already in depth in the V1M demo, and you can do basically the same. And in the editor, which comes with the device, you can configure and change this to your hearts alike. And you have even three different menus where you can have different settings and you even have two layers so you can have six different pages with commands and functions to execute. Having a quick look at the P1 Nano, it basically gives you the same features, but I can say I'm not a fan of these one fader controllers. It might work for you if you only click on channels and then use the fader, but changing it via here the up and down buttons is quite a tedious thing. At least an advantage of that one, in contrast, for example, to the X-Touch one of Behringer, is that you have at least the A knobs up there so you can change uh, volumes or panoramas of all eight channels at the same time without having to move around your channel all the time. And okay, you get also the transport section and also the knob is of the same size as you have it here. And you can also configure these nice touch displays. So it's not that much difference, but I think if you have a space on your desktop, it's definitely worth to get the bigger model. So on what do I think of that model in contrast to the big one, the V1M. And I have to say, I absolutely prefer that model because the V1M is 
pretty powerful, but it's also quite huge and you need a really big desk to feature that, especially if you want to use an extender as well with it and then you need really lots of space. And that one has a size which is even a little bit smaller than the X-Touch, which I run up here. It's much thinner, it has nicer displays. So I would definitely choose to use that model instead of the big one, but nevertheless, you should check out both of them. Yeah, so much for these two smaller models. What do you think about them? Do you have questions? Ask them down in the comments. And until next time, make some fucking music.